tonight I want to come clean. <laughs> Seriously, I want to come clean. I don't have a lot of vices, okay? I don't drink. I don't jewel. I don't go to hookah lounges. <laughs> I know I look like I do, but I don't. But I am an addict. And I am addicted to Amazon, which I know doesn't sound crazy as far as addictions go. I'm addicted to ventriloquism. I love eating toilet paper. I'm addicted to coffee and I'm addicted. I'm addicted to carrying around my husband's urn. If you're gonna love something full of ash and death, it should be Dick Cheney. <laughs> the show's called Patriot Act. The key here is recognizing you have a problem. Amazon Prime was my first taste of the white horse. But then I leveled up to the harder shit, which is Prime Now. Does anyone here have Prime Now? Okay, you know what I'm talking about. For $119 a year, you click on what you want, and within two hours, a sweaty Ukrainian man shows up at your door <laughs> with toothpicks, diapers, three bell peppers, and a Yoda costume for your dog. How do you say no to that? Because look, I, I'm way more lazy than I am woke, okay? I'll just admit it. We've all been in these compromising positions before, right? Look, I deleted Uber. I was like, Uber, you're done. And then I landed in Vancouver, and I was like, damn it, they don't have Lyft. <laughs> Convenience is the commodity that matters most to our generation. I can't believe I used to physically go to stores, take money out of my pocket, and pay for stuff like a peasant. <laughs> With Amazon, I just do this, mm. And things come to me like I'm an emperor. And it's not just me. We all love living like King Joffrey. We begin this hour with Amazon, the internet giant's market cap hitting a trillion dollars. 100 million Prime subscribers globally. 50% of um, all shop online shopping searches now begin on Amazon. Amazon intends to take over the world, and they're doing a pretty darn good job of it. Oh, thank you, nerdy Howie Mandel. <laughs> Amazon is taking over the world because of one man. Taco Bell pitchman Jeff Bezos. PDAs, handhelds, I've seen these. What do we have that's new? Well, this just came out. Interesting. Can I get a demo? Yeah, sure. Mmm. <laughs> He's looking at that quesadilla the way Quentin Tarantino looks at feet. <laughs> that's right, this Mexican cheese pervert is the richest man on earth. His net worth is over a hundred billion dollars. Call him what you want. Pikachu terrorist, Moby if he never retired, Jack Lex Luthor, but you can't knock the hustle. He is a visionary, and as Bezos has gotten swole, so has Amazon. It has invested in or acquired more than a hundred companies, including IMDb, Twitch, Audible, Songza, Skingo, Woot, Quidzy, and Whole Foods. Full disclosure, only one of those companies isn't real. <laughs> I didn't know which one it was either. And they have obviously come a long way from their early days. They started off as a bookstore, but they quickly moved on to other things. Amazon.com is my favorite toy store. Hey, you're not the boss of me. The greatest selection of toys online. I know you are, but what am I? Amazon.com, Amazon.com makes me feel like a kid, makes me feel like a kid. Stop copying me, stop copying me. Look at that mustache. <laughs> okay, I know that commercial seems weird, but if anything accurately describes Silicon Valley, it's a group of mostly white men dressed in shorts talking like children. As big as you think Amazon is, double it. Amazon killed bookstores and is now building new ones on top of their graves. That's like if my wife left me and then married another guy named Hassan Minhaj who also used too much hair product. 49% of all U.S. e-commerce happens on Amazon. Second place is eBay at 6.6%. You know, eBay, whose official slogan is eBay, because you couldn't find it on Amazon. 6.6%. <laughs> if a percentage is that low, it shouldn't count. We're looking at you, Elizabeth Warren. And if Amazon <laughs> is not number one in an industry, it's at least in the top five. Digital ads, streaming video, streaming music. And Amazon's about to top Walmart as the biggest apparel retailer in the U.S. And as a kid who went back to school shopping at Walmart, let me just say this. That is not apparel, okay? It's just polyester shit on hangers next to racks of radial tires. Amazon crushes it in every field. Amazon is like the childish Gambino of companies. Like, if someone told me that Donald Glover was hosting a late night series on Netflix, I'd be like, good night. It was a fun three episodes. We out. Peace. I know my limitations.
Thank you, Donald. Thank you for stealing my dreams. But Amazon's growth has come at a price, and Amazon's workers are paying for it. Amazon drivers and warehouse employees reportedly work punishing hours with few breaks. One afternoon in the, in the warehouse, I, I saw a bottle with, like a, an old Coke bottle with straw-colored liquid in, you know, smelt it, and it was very obvious very quickly what it was. People were, were when I was working there, were afraid to go to the toilet. <laughs> that British dude is right. Some workers felt they had to piss in bottles because they felt they didn't have time to go to the bathroom. Amazon denies this, but come on. These are human beings, not comedy writers. <laughs> Even when Amazon does something good, there's a downside. It recently announced a $15 minimum wage hike for its employees, but then cut bonuses and stock awards. Amazon is so innovative, they figured out a way to give workers a raise and cost them money. <laughs> you can't get as big as Amazon and treat workers that poorly without some really powerful people starting to take notice. I think it is important uh, to take a look at the power and influence that Amazon has. We want stronger enforcement of antitrust laws. You bet we do. He's got a huge antitrust problem because he's controlling so much. This is incredible. DJT, Elizabeth Warren, and Bernie Sanders all agree on something. It turns out Amazon even delivers bipartisanship. <laughs> what they're all worried about is Amazon becoming a monopoly? And you probably recognize the term from the board game, Monopoly, where the object of the game is to control everything and financially destroy your little sister until she cries. <laughs> TLDR, monopolies are really bad. When a company becomes too dominant, it can control markets, fix prices, and kill competition. It's basically like, woo! No rules, no one is grading me anymore, no one is looking, and it doesn't matter. You know, like going to UC Santa Cruz. <laughs> Go Slugs. And this is the problem. Where there's limited competition, companies have no incentive to be better. That's why AT&T fucking sucks. <laughs> Look, AT&T isn't a monopoly, but they know they've got us by the balls. AT&T is like, yo, switch to Metro PCS, see how that shit works out. <laughs> and I can't. Look at their ads. Welcome back to Tech and Talk. I'm Ranjit, this is Chad. A bad snake charmer. Always blames his snake. You should be with Metro PCS. Holy shish kebab! <laughs> Megyn Kelly saw those ads and was like, tight. I found my new Halloween costume. <laughs> oh, too real? <laughs> you know she'd dress up as a snake charmer. In the past, we've dealt with monopolies using something called antitrust laws. The Sherman Antitrust Law of 1890 and the Clayton Act were the first antitrust laws in America. They were used to break up big companies like Standard Oil and the railroads. But unlike the railroads, it's harder to define all the things a tech company controls. So it's harder to get antitrust laws to stick. That's why these laws are almost never enforced against big tech companies anymore. Take the infamous Microsoft case in 2001. It was about Microsoft automatically installing Internet Explorer <laughs> on Windows 95. <laughs> The government was like, yo, okay, you have a monopoly on the operating system, Minesweeper, the pinball machine, Solitaire, and Internet Explorer? You, sir, have gone too far. Also, it's not fair to Netscape. <laughs> Stop being mean, Microsoft. This is how few fucks Microsoft gave about the antitrust hearings. I believe in uh, winners and losers, and, and especially the freedom to fail. Who? Who? Him? Who? Him? Who? Him? 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 Who? Me? What? I'll be honest, I have no idea what the point of that video was. <laughs> Here's what I do know. Bill Gates wants us to forget that video so bad that he's trying to end malaria. <laughs> that cackle was everything. And when it comes to government oversight, tech companies have nothing to fear because this is what they're up against. How do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? Senator, we run ads. I see. Let's face it. Congress will understand Migos before it understands Amazon's business model. Uh, well, Senator Hatch, they're called Migos, like the three Amigos. I see. Okay, come on, there is no way Congress is gonna figure out if Amazon's a monopoly. When you play Monopoly, the goal is to make as much money as possible. But Amazon plays by a different set of rules. 
<laughs> well, we are a famously unprofitable company. This is a strategy that the company has used from the very beginning to lose money in order to gain market share. Amazon was relentless about losing money to gain market share. In fact, when he started the company in 1994, Jeff Bezos actually wanted to call Amazon relentless. <laughs> that doesn't sound like an online retail store. It sounds like the name of a cologne Shia LaBeouf drinks between takes. <laughs> It's like, ah, relentless, ha, ah! say action, Gary, say action, ha. Ah! <laughs> now, if you go to relentless.com, it still redirects to amazon.com. And so does diapers.com. In 2009, Amazon wanted to buy diapers.com, but the owners refused to sell, so Amazon retaliated. It offered Amazon Prime free for three months for any parent and then slashed its prices to the point where it was literally bleeding hundreds of millions of dollars. Cut to a few months later and diapers.com is sold to Amazon. If a company is willing to bleed out hundreds of millions of dollars just to undercut you, you know you're screwed. That's like if someone wanted to throw down at a bar and then the first thing they did was smash a beer bottle and then stab themselves in the neck, <laughs> but they kept bleeding and didn't die, and you had no choice but to sell your company to them because you were drowning in their blood. <laughs> You'd be like, fuck, here's diapers.com. It's yours, man, just take it. Take it, Taco Bell, man. There is a name for undercutting competitors at a loss to eliminate them. It's called predatory pricing. Here's a simpler way of describing predatory pricing. Picture a mom and pop store. Now imagine Amazon as the Menendez brothers. <laughs> if you're a small store and you want to sell on the internet, you have got to go through Amazon. Say you're a small paintball store that tried to expand its business by selling on Amazon. We might put out 100 products. Let's say 50 of them do well. Amazon sees that because they have access to our sales and they will buy that product directly from the manufacturer and sell that taking us out of the picture. This is the biggest catch-22 of putting your product on Amazon. You need to be there because that's where everyone shops. But they're gonna steal your secret sauce. If you're a product manufacturer and you put your products on Amazon, they're studying you. They're gonna copy it if it's successful. And if you don't, you can't sell your product because consumers are so locked into Prime. Think about it. Amazon Basics, Amazon Business. Amazon has a whole line of products to swagger jack you like Alibaba fake Yeezys. And they get away with it. I buy iPhone chargers from Amazon Basics because Amazon keeps recommending them to me and they're cheaper. Amazon undercuts its competitors and dominates entire markets. One of the reasons it's allowed to do this is because it hasn't broken the cardinal rule of antitrust, the consumer welfare standard. It basically means as long as you're keeping prices low and services great, it doesn't matter how big you get. This idea was pioneered by a guy named Robert Bork. He was a conservative judge who managed to be on the wrong side of history at almost every turn, whether it was firing the special prosecutor during the Watergate investigation or defending racist voter suppression laws. But he is most famous for being denied a seat on the Supreme Court. His Senate confirmation hearing gave us the best word that sounds like sex, but is actually the opposite of pleasure. A little thing called borking, his name is now a verb. It means to obstruct someone. Bork was borked. Famously borked. Bob Bork. <laughs> Judge Bork was borked. You know things turned out wrong when your last name is used to bleep out goodfellas on TNT. <laughs> antitrust wasn't always like this. Robert Bork redefined how we think about antitrust and made it all about consumer welfare. The problem is consumer welfare is meaningless for Amazon because it's always been willing to lose money and keep prices low to gain market share. As a business, Amazon is always willing to delay its gratification to give us instant gratification. That's why even if Amazon is harming other businesses, it's difficult to say that it's breaking antitrust laws. And the crazy part is, Amazon's retail side hasn't always been their most profitable. It's a front. It's like Los Pollos Hermanos in Breaking Bad. <laughs> the chicken is delicious but the real money is being made by shipping meth. Which brings us to Amazon's meth. Amazon Web Services, AWS. AWS provides server space, cybersecurity, and all of the infrastructure businesses need to operate on the internet. Last year, AWS brought in $17.5 billion. It's so profitable, but it has such a boring name. Amazon Web Services is like that folder on a high schooler's laptop labeled AP Euro. It seems innocent, 
But when you click on it, you're like, why is there a password? <laughs> this is weird. Okay, aunties and uncles watching this, if that joke doesn't make sense to you, allow me to explain. Your son, Vinay, is watching a lot of porn. <laughs> and some of that porn is probably going through AWS. <laughs> Amazon is so dominant in cloud computing. They're the internet's largest landlord, and it seems like every major player is their tenant. The Dow Jones, Airbnb, GE, Kellogg, Adobe, Spotify, Pinterest, the State Department, and the CIA all have used or are currently using Amazon Web Services. And don't think I'm just hating on Amazon because Netflix pays my rent. Even Netflix <laughs> uses Amazon Web Services. Netflix accounts for 15% of global internet bandwidth. 2% of that is Adam Sandler movies. <laughs> and between retail and AWS, Amazon has control over the most important 21st century commodity, data. Data about how we spend our money and what parts of the internet we're using. Unlike Facebook and Google, who need your customer data to sell ads to businesses, Amazon is a one-stop shop. They know who you are, what you buy, and will sell it directly to you. Despite knowing all of this, I'm not gonna lie. I'm still gonna use Amazon. It's an essential <laughs> utility for me. I need water, heat, and Prime Now. And if I had to choose between the three, Prime Now delivers water. <laughs> Let's be real, come on. If there's a line in the sand, and there's woke on one side and lazy on the other, best believe I'm choosing lazy. Look, my wokeness has a limit. Remember when United dragged that Asian uncle off the plane? I boycotted United until I had to fly O'Hare. And I was like, <laughs> look, the woke part of me was like, don't fucking do it. And then the Indian part of me was like, they gave you economy plus. <laughs> I'm like the only one who's hooked. Advertisers are hooked on Amazon's data. Vendors are hooked on its customers. Politicians are hooked on its jobs. And companies are hooked on its servers. And Wall Street is hooked on its stock price. And before you know it, we're all gonna end up here. Her addiction has recently evolved. I guess with the transfer of his cremains, they spilled out on my hands. And I didn't want to wipe, wipe them off, so I just licked it off my fingers. And here I am today, almost two months later, and I can't stop. I'm eating my husband. Addiction keeps getting worse until you bottom out and lick your husband's ashes off your fingers. Don't groan. This is not just about Amazon. Big tech companies like Google and Facebook are amassing huge amounts of our personal data, and they're not being held accountable for how they're using it. But what happens when something goes wrong? A company that started as a website for horny college kids to hook up may have helped swing a presidential election. There is a cost to bigness, even if it's not passed on to the consumer. And if companies do need to be reined in, how is a law from 1890 supposed to do anything? That's like pulling out a condom made in 1890 and being like, fuck it, I hope this works. <laughs> you just blow on that shit like it's a Nintendo cartridge, like, hey man. <laughs> Time to go hard in the paint. Places like the EU are actually using antitrust laws to effectively regulate big companies and we need to follow their lead. We need updated antitrust laws for the digital age to save us from ourselves. But until we get them, if Amazon's going to keep controlling markets, killing competition, and mistreating workers, the least they could do is make a holiday commercial that's a little more honest. Amazon.com arrives in a snap. So much joy when you unwrap. Whole Foods, Zappos, Audible, and Twitch. There's nobody we can't make our bitch. Completely ruthless, that's our story. For Weinstein level, predatory. Our workers are adults, no need to coddle. They don't need breaks, just be in a bottle. We just got an order for an Indian guy. There's nothing in the Did world they just say Indian guy? you can buy. Whether you're black, white, a Muslim, or a Jew. We'll deliver anything right to you. You'll be back tomorrow and the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that. Cause Amazon is crap. <laughs> Showing my legs on TV is probably the scariest thing I've ever done. And keep in mind, last week I went after the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. 